So welcome everyone. Today we have with us Himanshu Sharma sir. Uh, he did his uh, he did his B.Tech from with Delhi University, and after that he has been working with government since 2016 2019. He started his investment journey in stock markets in 2016, and after that uh, he has been a full time trader since 2019. He is currently staying in Jakarta, Indonesia. He also recently cleared CMT level two. So welcome on the show, sir. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction, and I'm glad to be a part of your podcast. Great, great, sir. So, can I start asking your questions? Yeah, definitely. Great, sir. So, first, my question is, sir, when you were in your B Tech uh, in 2016, how did you get interested in stock market in the first place? Uh, what intrigued you to uh, start investing and uh, in the stock markets? Actually, it was the year 2016. So I joined government service while I was preparing also for the civil services mains examination. And uh, when I joined service, so we had to save taxes under Section 80C. It was basically an ELSS mutual fund which I got recommended to by my one of my friend. He was working with me, Shammi Nara. He is still with me right now, trading with me. So. Uh, the basic thought that I am investing in a mutual fund, then for the two months, I was researching all about what actually mutual funds are or what are these fund managers doing. And thereafter, I came across the basic idea of investing in stocks. So I still remember that there was one stock which was common to most of the fund holdings was TTK Prestige. And uh, many YouTubers were also analyzing the balance sheet of that company. So that quite intrigued me because while preparing for examination, there was a scheme launched by Honorable Prime Minister recently, the PM Ujwala Yojana, where they were distributing gas connections to families. Right. So I read an article in the newspaper that uh, how this uh, these gas connections will help in uh, uh, actually being a beneficiary to have uh, this company Hawkins and TTK Prestige. So I somehow bought that share because my capital was very small. But uh, that's how I got interested in stock market because I thought that I am, uh, this is my hobby. Like I'm reading a lot every day. So I'm facing 10 standard. I'm reading almost eight to 10 hours every day. So I was reading a lot. So I got to know that you get money in this field mein, where you study. And you get money. So that's how I got interested in the stock market. And since then, I am here like full time trader. So I resigned from my service also because I got my passion here. Got it. So, but how did the transition happening in the three years that you learned so much about the uh, in, uh, investments and stock market that you quit your job and become a full time trader? How did that transition happen? Actually, in 2016, when I went deeper into initially for two, three months into mutual fund industry and then about stocks. Uh, but I was having time also with me on every weekend. I was putting an extra hour, but I realized that if I am uh, picking stocks like Asian Paints or PD Light, these stocks are known by the investors, like everybody knows. Okay. So okay. I think it would be a story still decent number, like 25%, 20% return I can expect over a long period from these companies. But I thought that if I have to do something big, then I have to look for the micro caps and the nano caps. So if you look my profile, it's written there. I'm a basically a micro or nano cap investor. So I started picking some great micro caps. Then there was one company, uh, GI Eco Products, where I lost my money in 17, or I think late 17. I bought the share at 34 rupees and it went up till 86. The promoter was good. Everything was good. Actually, the promoter was also awarded by the Gujarat government for his initiatives in the bio pellets industry. His, whatever he was saying was uh, so appealing to me that I invested heavily. As a beginner, I was not knowing about diversification, how much money to put in. So I lost big when he was caught in a GST fraud. I think the share price started going down. Then I realized that I'm missing something. I am good at fundamental analysis, picking stocks. But one thing I'm not good at is that when to exit a trade, because that would be my advice to all of you also that never give back your profits to the market. Whatever the market has given you, suppose your capital was 10 lakh, it went up to 20 lakh, now your capital is 20 lakh. So people consider that this 10 is my profit. 
and what they do is that they started they start gambling with that profit so okay. in a way their capital again comes back to 12 or 13 they give back their profit to the market so that's where when i realized that i have to work on my exit credits method also so i read a many 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 number of books on technical analysis that time and this field actually appealed me a lot because through a chart i can understand where the institutions are putting in their money when are they getting out so knowing both fa and ta i can say that sometimes fundamental analysis takes time to change i mean i mean the news is out uh, only uh, i think two or three months later when the events change in a company whereas your chart will show you first that big investors are exiting from the stock so that's how i got interested in technical analysis and so for so the stock that you bought and it, it it went loss for you that taught you the how to exit companies and that got got you to interest in technical analysis right uh, correct technical analysis so basically i went from like scratch not it's not like that i learned technical analysis and started making money i experiment in in one one and a half year i was only only studying at all i was not trading at all so then i went in with 50000 rupees for 6 months in the market so what actually i was doing is that after reading i got to know that i am good at spotting the base formations when the stock is in an uptrend i do not want to buy a stock that is going down so i was checking the chart of nifty 500 all 500 companies every day i was doing that so initially it took me around 3 to 4 hours every day but later on the time came down to 1 hour or 2 hours approximately so i was good at spotting base formation the horizontal boundaries so i came up with 50000 rupees and in the initial 6 months i was spotting only horizontal boundaries and doing nothing else so i think i remember hdfc amc in 18 or i think 19 was a base formation then there were many many stocks with horizontal boundaries so once they moved up uh, i mean crossing that boundary i will enter so i will make some 5 to 6 or 10% move i will shift to other position i will doing i was doing doing this repeatedly so i got a decent profit in 6 months i think capital went up to 86 or 90000 that gave me a confidence that now i can start with an um, a big capital so i then uh, going with this road map so i again came up with a big capital of 10 lakh uh, i think i uh, got some from my savings and some from my family so then i started trading in 2000 mid 2018 or 19 i started full time in the market not exactly full time i was still one year into the service and uh, i was only trading these flat base formations that i am teaching to all the beginners on my social media profile also right. and so for first of all basically you focused on one strategy in technical analysis and mastered that strategy for basically 6 to 8 uh, months right yes if you look base at formations and your investors if you read about all the successful traders out there they have one basic strategy like if you talk about uh, sir stan weinstein he has written in a book so he has a strategy of entering and exiting or sir mark minervini or sir larry hyatt or jesse livermore all have a basic one strategy that they are mastering over the years so in india also like great traders like mitesh sir has a strategy or uh, there are many many traders like they have a particular strategy they are playing in on that so i think it helps you to decode what actually your personality is what your characteristics are and in which strategy are you comfortable and master that or that art over a period of time and what the what resources would you recommend for the beginners who want to get interested in technical analysis and want to learn that basically uh, what i would recommend is that uh, start from the basics like zerodha varsity has the basic module i think module number 2 or 3 on technical analysis it's i think 170 pages document so first everybody must uh, read that document it starts from uh, candlesticks and then support resistance trend lines and then indicators as well 
so it's a brief uh, comprehensive summary on technical analysis after that you will realize that what is now uh, that particular topic in the module on which you need to further uh, research or dig down deeper so there is for instance when i was reading these the documents i went to for candlesticks i referred to steve nison's book the candlestick and then uh, or for chart patterns you have richard shebecker's book technical analysis in stock market profits and uh, edwards and maggie so there are many many books out there so read as much as you can and uh, there are certain topics like chart patterns for which there is a different subset of books then you have on candlesticks different subset and uh, then you have the most important part in technical analysis is that learn from someone who has done it so those are the books from the legendary investors like sir jesse livermore then sir richard demel wickoff that's a photocopy version i think some uh, yeah the xerox version by richard demel wickoff on tape reading and then mark minervini's uh, triplet then stan weinstein's book profiting from bull and bear market strategies and one book by sir larry hight which i will recommend definitely everybody should read that the rule by sir larry hight he was born half blind only with one eye he couldn't see from the other eye also only half vision he was suffering from dyslexia and his fund mint management clocked 1 billion dollar the first hedge fund in the industry to touch 1 billion dollar and he was given i think in 2013 the lifetime achievement award so these legends have written their entire life into 300 to 500 pages so you need to read what have they actually done so this will really help you a lot in formulating your strategy and giving you a direction somewhere so i have many 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 names there in the technical analysis field or the trading field like you have mark douglas trading in the zone and then you have market wizards by jack schwager sir jack schwager so uh, this recent edition of uh, september 20 unknown market wizards where he has interviewed sir peter brand peter brand is now active on Uh, twitter also so there are many legends you need to know about so that's what i will recommend to beginner for 8 to 9 months 10 months spend some time in understanding the crux of the topic and uh, go only with the authentic sources and read about legends so do only this part right so so if summarizing your statement first you can start with zero the varsity read their basic modules and then for the next uh, one uh, six months to one year read all the le- legendary books written by the great uh, uh, trade technical analysts and traders right yes correct and also uh, one more thing i would like to add that start only with a small capital first okay. maybe one share or five shares at least you keep nifty bees in your portfolio that is the basic nifty etf you buy one quantity or five quantity so that you are in the market and you are also comparing that whatever stock you are buying whether it is giving more return than nifty bees or not that will tell you about relative strength so start with only the small capital do not do paper trading i am not a supporter of paper trading because paper trading will not help you It, it because your emotions are not involved in paper trading you can buy as much quantity as you want to so got that it. would be my recommendation got it so so uh, uh, paper trading basically means like the you are buying uh, the uh, you are not you are not buying the real shares of the company right you are just yeah, buying digital you are digital not buying real shares it just uh, like playing a video game uh, noting down you bought okay. 10 shares at this price now because your emotions are not involved so if the market is volatile in paper trading you are relaxed so but when your real money is put in you will your hands will shiver in placing a big order so okay. that's how you will practice with small capital initially and over a period increase it okay and so basically in the starting of the podcast you mentioned that you are nano cap investor so basically so how do you spot the nano cap and what is your screening uh, criteria in technical analysis, analysis? because uh, people know how uh, how the screening criteria works in fundamental analysis but how it is different in the ta technical analysis actually uh, one of the problem that i am facing in indian market is the circuit limit so it's very difficult yeah, can you explain the circuit limit sir what is circuit limit uh, circuit limit is that uh, like in some stocks i think 
there is 5% circuit limit. So they cannot trade with more than 5% fluctuation, both up and down. So if the stock price yesterday was 100, today it will be in the range of 95 to 105. To avoid uh, heavy movements, to I think to protect retail investors, SEBI came up with this rule, or I am not sure about who came up this rule. But this circuit limit won't let the stock to cross 105. So when it goes 5% circuit every day, then it is very difficult for a technical and for a trader basically to get out of the position if something goes worry. So in technical analysis, the basic, you pick up any book, the first statement is technical analysis is applied in a freely traded securities. So if you go to the Uganda market, only 10 companies are listed. So what will you do here? There, basically out of 10, two are Bank of Baroda and Sipla in Uganda listed there. So there is no trading going on the circuit to circuit movements. So the problem in the nano cap and the micro cap is that technical analysis is not applied fully in those stocks where there is a circuit limit. So there you have to understand about their fundamentals also. So about nano cap, like I read, actually I place a filter of less than 100 CR market cap or less than 200 CR market cap. And then all the companies, I have a habit of visiting their website and understand what are they actually doing. So that's how I pick. But technical and technically, sometimes uh, if a company like in TradingView, there is a screener if, if at the bottom left corner. If you click on stock screener there, so there is a market capitalization criteria in the scanner. You can put 200, 200 million there, so 20 CR and uh, sorry, 2000 million. So it will be around 200 CR, less than 200 CR. So I am reading about their chart patterns sometimes, but but circuit limit is a problem. That's not in Indonesian market or in or in I mean in American market, but it's a problem here. So you have you cannot rely only on technical analysis in case of nano caps and micro caps in India. You have to go deeper into their what are their business and that. So. Uh, so for nano cap or micro cap, you have to research more on there. So I read all the companies starting from, I think there is a quote you may be better knowing than me that by Warren, Sir Warren Buffet that uh, uh, I start with letter A <laughs> when there are so many companies to be studied. So that's what I do. I go with the de descending order of MCAP and I read about all the companies. That's what I do. All right, so for, in the nano cap, you uh, in the Indian markets, you don't just don't rely on the technical parameters, but you also consider the fundamental parameters, right? Correct, correct. correct. Got for, it. for even the large caps or mid caps also, I rely on the fundamental part, but my first scanning is done through technicals. Got it. And on the uh, upper, uh, the circuit part, sir, if there is an upper circuit, uh, the, there are only buyers and no sellers, if I'm understanding it correctly. Right? Yes, correct, correct. There are only buyers and no sellers, like many companies, Kelton Tech, then there are so, so many stocks there, BCG, Leica Labs, TTML, or every day moving up and down with circuit limits. Got it. And so you mentioned trading view. So can you give more tools that a person ca can use to uh, research the charts of a company? Uh, I have a basic scan. Um, I mean, I use relative strength, which is the core principle of my stock selection process. Relative strength is basically, for, I am using it for past 55 days. So if Nifty is moving up by 10%, I want my stock to perform better than 10%. That's basically relative strength. My stock is relatively stronger than the benchmark. So you will be surprised that the first known research paper written on relative strength was in 1945 by H.M. Gartley. After that, I remember in 1967, there was a research paper written by Robert Levy. And uh, there is one book by Richard Love, which Sir Mark Minervini has also mentioned in one of his chapters, Super Performance Talks. And there is one book, The Relative Strength Concept of Common Sense Investing. This book is very costly, $1,300 or $1,400 something. So I got an access through one of my friend in Canada through his Canadian library. So I read that. Then in 95, uh, 93, there was, a, there was an Indian named person, Professor Narsimhan Jagdish, who wrote extensively on relative strength. So it, why I am saying all this is that because it's a time-tested principle. If your stock is not performing better than Nifty, I mean, why are you trading at all? You can simply buy Nifty ETF in your portfolio. 
because nifty etf gives you 15% 12% if market corrects you buy them accumulate them so in trading view what actually i am doing it if you are using a free version also you calculate the 3 month performance of nifty by opening the 3 month chart and then in the bottom left corner you have a stock scanner you apply one filter in filters you have the 3 month performance so suppose nifty moved up 5% in 3 month you put in that scanner that 3 month performance of my stock should be more than 5% okay so there you will get a list of stocks and then i personally do not trade in stocks with less than 100 rupees value which i have disclosed multiple times so i also put the last you have a feature in trading view last where it is written in the scanner so last price should be greater or above 100 so i'll get okay. a list of stocks so now this is my core focus area if at all i am using trading view but i am screening stocks on market smith india so in market smith i get all the features in a single window so but that comes with a subscription so if you want the free version you can use trading view that gives a fair bit of idea and then from these stocks if if uh, if in if the market is very healthy i think 140 to 160 names filter out if the market is not doing good like in november or october last the names were 60 to 80 so this filter also tells me about health of the market so i think last week some 162 or 146 names got filtered out thereafter i will look to screen the stocks i will look which sectors are stronger because i if if a tech company is breaking out or a infra name depending on the market i will be deciding which sector to put my money on i will remove all the stocks with circuit limits then i will be left with our, i think around 90 to 100 names then i will do some a uh, basic check on what the company is doing basic screeners i will check their setups on the charts so some 30 to 35 stock remains based on the setup after that setup the most favorite set of of setup of mine is that price should be above 50 uh, moving days moving average 200 days moving average it should be in an uptrend and it should be making a base formation so i think 5 to 9 names only qualify in that list those are the best names like i can give you example right now gravita or how minda cop is doing or how pix transmission these are the stocks that are not going down in the market correction because they are relatively strong they are forming a base they are in a healthy uptrend so in those stocks i am interested basically so every weekend the number comes to 5 to 9 stocks and i'm comfortable in holding only 5 to 8 positions in the market got it so and uh, you mentioned the you uh, again filtered them out in the 50 D, uh, dma so can you elaborate on dma what is dma for the viewers actually a uh, 50 days moving average so you forget the word moving just focus on average what is average of 50 students who performed in a english class what is the average sum total of their marks and divided by the number of students that's the average now for any stock the average for 50 days is the 50 days closing price average the moment you add 50 first day the first day is eliminated, eliminated from the calculation so that is why now the second term comes moving so it is that is why it is a moving average so it's a moving average for 50 days closing price of a stock so if a stock is above 50 days moving average also above 200 days moving average and 50 days moving average is itself above 200 days moving average it is at least telling me about the trend of the stock but here is a caveat here is a warning both the moving averages should be sloping upwards that tells me that the trend is upwards because they may be flat also so criss crossing each other or sometimes it's flat i am not interested in those stocks i want the stocks to be making a healthy uptrend got it got it and uh, summarizing your whole uh, whole uh, 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 whole the theme of screening first you said you filter out on the relative strength the relative strength if that i understood is basically you have to outperform the nifty like for example if nifty is performing 10% it should be more than 10% the company that you screen and then uh, out of those 150 to 160 stocks you again screen them through your uh, own fundamental or technical par- parameters then after that only uh, quality 5 to 9 companies remain and then that uh, uh, you take in positions in them right 
actually if i look at 150 to 160 names the computer will still throw up those names in front of me even when the moving averages are criss crossing so i want the moving averages to be sloping upwards that's where 30 to 40 or 50 names come out of the screen got it and then later on then i'm uh, looking for my favorite setups in them got it got it sir so another another question that i have you you have recently cleared cmt level 2 can you also uh, tell what is cmt and how it is related to the uh, how it is related to technical an- analysis that you do uh, cmt is basically uh, conducted by mta market trade association technician association and cmt is a three stage process level 1 2 3 examinations are held in june and december so if you read the book by john murphy technical analysis book by john murphy which is very famous i think in chapter number 30 or 31 or i think 32 he mentioned about cmt so what he says in his book i am uh, just saying what he is saying that if you have a disease will you go to a doctor without an mbbs uh, no you will not do that so if you want to make a bridge you will not go to an engineer with a ba- without a basic engineering degree so that is why in the field of technical analysis this problem was faced so mta market technician association came up with this cmt charter examination which is a three level process after clearing all the three uh, levels and also with a work experience of 3 years you are considered to be a cmt uh, designation designated uh, charter holder so it's the highest level designation for a technical analysis field so i mean there are others also cft also certified financial technician which thankfully i got today from ifta that is international federation of technical analysts so cmt cft both are a good courses but cmt is a, a literally little little tough that's what my experience is so cmt is the highest like cfa you have in the financial field the fundamental part like in technical analysis if you want the highest designation it is cmt as of now got it so it's the first uh, in the only in the degrees in the financial field were for fundamental analysis which was cfa and ca then the need arise to make one for technical analysis also and then the association came in and made this cmt right yes is correct mta association came up with this cmt designation program correct correct that's all for all over that's all for my question sir thanks for being on the show any thank you thank remarks? you very much any thank any you. closing remarks that you have sir well uh, to uh, i mean to all the beginners like focus on learning focus on do not chase money do not chase return initially just focus on the process have your own system test your system over a over a multiple period of time and over in so many market phases have a belief in yourself that you can change your life and trust me it is a field where you can change not only your own life but the generations to come take it with a serious note it's not a fun game where you open a telegram channel and rely on recommendations and make money that's not how it is done so have a belief in yourself and in fact most of them are asking doubts from me so my twitter handle is always open if you have any query related to ta i will be happy to help you and that's what i am doing with the honest intention so have a belief system in yourself and there is i mean don't trust anything in the market except what charts are saying you that is the ultimate truth so that would be my closing remarks and all the best to to you to you also for your website and uh, the things you are doing you are really helping the retail investors a lot and i think with i think at such young age for 15 i was not even uh, closer to books <laughs> rather than that so i started studying in when i was in my 10th standard so after that i am studying so for beginners out there for read a lot read about newspaper read about magazines and have a, a belief in indian story the indian growth story is intact because when i compare the charts of global markets the indian uh, market along with the vietnam is standing stronger right now even vietnam market also indian market also so there is a huge potential in the indian growth story 
so believe in that and uh, you can invest also through charts which is a common myth, myth that charts are only for trading that's not true so you can invest through charts also like i am holding acrisil since 144 levels based on charts only so you can do that so any time if you need some help uh, my profile is open for you yeah so thanks a lot it was wonderful interacting with you yeah sir's uh, twitter handle is the chartist uh, the link is in description do check him and follow him thank you for being on the show sir. thank you thank you very much jai hind jai hind